What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and in today's video, I'm going to guide you through installing Ubuntu as well as the Windows subsystem for Linux and getting everything to work in version 2.0. So this video will be split up into multiple parts. Make sure to check the timestamps in the description down below or check the play bar just under the video as it should be split up into chapters. So in this first one, we're going to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux and enable the virtual machine platform as well, which allows us to use the WSL in version 2. So to do that, make sure that you have a Windows version that is compatible. I have Windows 10 Pro, so there's absolutely nothing I need to worry about. Then press Start and type in Features. Then click on Turn Windows Features On or Off. When we see this pop-up, simply scroll down to the very bottom and we'll be making sure that Windows Subsystem for Linux is checked, as well as the Virtual Machine Platform up here. Assuming that they're unchecked, simply checking them and clicking OK, you'll go through the installation process. Your PC probably will restart a couple of times, but by the end of it, you should have WSL as well as the Virtual Machine Platform installed. Of course, there is an alternate method of doing that, and that is by using a bunch of commands. Those will be in the description down below. Press Start, type in CMD, run as admin, and then we'll be pasting in these commands. The first one enables the Windows subsystem for Linux, and the second one enables the virtual machine platform. Then the third command in the description down below is WSL set default version 2. This will set all future installs for different Linux operating systems to the version 2 by default, which is much faster and much better. If you hit enter, you may see an error like this saying, please check information here. What do we do if we see this? Well, the official Microsoft resource over here says that if you do follow this link, aka.ms slash WSL2 kernel, and install the MSI from that page on our documentation to install a Linux kernel on your machine for WSL2 to use. Once you have the kernel installed, please run the command again and it should complete successfully without showing the error message. So, heading across to this tab, which will be linked down below, the WSL2 kernel, all we have to do is click the download link over here. Then a file will download, and right below it, we have some information on installing it. All we have to do is simply click on it once it's done downloading, next, yes when prompted for admin, and then finish. Now that we've reached this point, we have to close out of this command prompt window, press start, CMD, and run it as admin once again. Then we'll hit enter. If you see this over here without a 0x error code above it, or you don't see a different error code, then this means that it has worked properly, even though it isn't exactly telling us. It's just telling us to check this website for more info, which of course we won't have to do. If yours looks exactly like what this looks like, then congratulations, it's been set to version 2 by default successfully. So at this point, let's go ahead and install an operating system. I'll of course be installing the classic Ubuntu. So simply press start and type in store. Then we'll head across to the Microsoft Store app as such. We'll hit the search button on the top right and we'll either enter Linux or an operating system such as Ubuntu. Then when you find what you want, simply click on it and we'll see this over here. All you have to do is click a get and the operating system should download. You can choose to sign in, otherwise you can click no thanks and you can download and install it without having to sign in first. So now we're downloading the 450 meg package. All we have to do is wait for it to finish. Then we can either click launch here or press start and click Ubuntu. Then you can see it's currently installing. All we have to do is wait for this to finish. Now we'll enter a Unix username. I'll call myself say Technobo or even simpler Techno. Then I'll enter a password, password again, and we've now set it up properly. At this point, we can run PSF and see the running applications, of course. We can of course close out of it, press start, CMD, and we'll have a command prompt window open. Let's go ahead and run WSL space hyphen L space hyphen V. This will list all of our virtual machines as well as the current version. You can see I have Ubuntu installed, state stopped, of course, because I closed the window and version is currently two. Super simple. Hypothetically, you had a operating system installed before we set the default to version two and it's showing up here as version one. What exactly can you do about it? Well, it's incredibly simple. All we have to do is run WSL space hyphen hyphen set hyphen version followed by the name of the operating system. So for me, this one would be Ubuntu, but of course yours may be Ubuntu hyphen 1804 or something like that. Then space followed by the version, which will be two. Of course, I managed to misspell version, but now it's worked. Of course, because it was already version two, absolutely nothing has changed. So with that done, opening up the Ubuntu command line once again, 
we can bring across the Windows command prompt, WSL LV, and we can see that Ubuntu is currently running version two. So with Ubuntu running, we can run explorer.exe space full stop, hit enter, and a Windows Explorer window will open on the network in the WSL folder Ubuntu Home Techno. And now we can basically interact with all of the files on the virtual machine, basically through the Windows Explorer, which makes it super handy. Of course, everything works exactly as you expect with the Windows subsystem for Linux. It's great. Now, of course, a quick note about requirements. What exactly do we need for this to work in the first place? Well, assuming that you hit some kind of an error, hopefully you jumped to this section in the video. Having a look at this information page for the WSL, scrolling down, you can see version two requires Windows 10 updated to version 1903 or higher. How do we check? Well, hold down start and press R, then type in WinVer. Start R, WinVer. And you can see I'm currently on version 2004, which is higher than 1903. Of course, if yours isn't of the correct version, update to the latest version using the Windows Update Assistant or the Windows Update if you have it available there. For more troubleshooting regarding the installation, make sure to check the description down below where they run through some possible issues and answers to your questions. This information page over here is part of what we ran through in the first part of this video and is incredibly useful. And of course, the last thing you need to make sure of, which you probably have enabled by now, if you've used another virtual machine software, such as Hyper-V especially, if you were to open up your task manager and head across to the performance tab, CPU, you should see that virtualization is enabled. If you don't have virtualization enabled, make sure to enable it in your computer's BIOS first, at reboot into Windows, and you should have access to the WSL. I, of course, have virtualization enabled, as well as Hyper-V support, because that's what I mainly use for virtual machines. I haven't had to change anything to get this to work properly. Though I know that with Hyper-V support enabled, in other software like VMware, you do need to have Hyper-V support disabled within the Windows operating system by pressing Start, typing in Features, and then disabling Hyper-V over here. So as you can see, I have it enabled, and the WSL worked pretty much as expected, so this shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found something useful in it. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.